Brian Daughtry has lived a life surrounded by family and adventure. He seemed set for a long and happy retirement in the new forest, but 16 years ago, Brian took out a financial product which has nearly ruined him. It's a type of mortgage which leaves people helpless as day by day, brick by brick, their homes are taken from them. Campaigners say these products should never have been sold to thousands of elderly people like Brian, and we believe the banks broke their own voluntary code when they did so. The fact is they were toxic, they were poisonous, they were exploitative, they should never have been issued. It just seems like an utter disgrace. It's almost robbery. In 1960, Brian took his family to Africa and spent the rest of his career there. It was a wonderful time, but as a guest worker in a foreign country, Brian didn't get a pension. After a few years of retirement, money was getting tight. So Brian decided to release some of the equity in his house by taking an interest-free loan from the Bank of Scotland. He borrowed £35,000 and agreed that in return, the bank would take 75% of any of the increase in the value of his home. At the time, he thought it was a good deal. Many skirt days, MGB. It's good to have an MGB in the tropics because you could take the hood off and forget it. <laughs> I just thought, right, go for it. You know, I'm that sort of person that when I went to Africa, I went for it, you know, and that's the sort of thing I do a bit. Uh, and um, whether you call it a weakness or not, but anyway, yeah. Brian had signed up to a shared appreciation mortgage, a product which was only ever offered by Barclays and the Bank of Scotland for two years between 1996 and 1998. The Bank of Scotland gave Brian £35,000 cash, interest-free, in return for 75% of any future increase in the value of his property. Right now, Brian's home is worth £450,000, if he sold it tomorrow, he'd have to hand over more than £232,000 to the Bank of Scotland, plus the original £35,000 loan, a return for the bank of 664%. To put it another way, in 1998, the bank lent Brian 25% of the value of his property. As of now, it owns 59%, and that percentage will keep growing as the value of Brian's property goes up. Did the bank at any stage say you need to go and get independent financial advice about this product before signing up to it? I, I don't remember them doing that, but um, it's quite possible there might be a clause somewhere in the contract with advising you to do that. But no one ever said I that to you, and no one ever drew, that, drew your attention to that clause? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Every day that goes by, the Bank of Scotland owns a greater percentage of Brian's bungalow. The deal only ends when Brian sells up. The moment he does, the bank will take its share and Brian won't be able to afford anywhere suitable with what's left. He's trapped. And he's not alone. Nearly 12,000 shared appreciation mortgages were sold by Barclays and the Bank of Scotland, and many thousands of people are still stuck with them. I took it up with financial ombudsman and they seemed as though they were interested and they spent several weeks corresponding and interviewing banks and things like that. And, and finally, they declared that they didn't have enough authority to be able to do anything about it. Inside Out asked the financial ombudsman, which exists to resolve complaints between banks and customers, why they couldn't help. What they told us was extraordinary. Barclays and the Bank of Scotland set up a series of entirely separate companies to administer shared appreciation mortgages. Because these new companies weren't signatories to the banking code, the ombudsman was powerless. Brian's situation does seem pretty hopeless. He signed away 75% of the future growth of his only asset, his home, for £35,000 in cash. And now he's living with the consequences. Should we just shrug our shoulders and say, well, tough luck, you agreed the deal? Or has he paid enough for his mistake? Should these products ever have been made available in the first place? Absolutely not. And the banks know perfectly well that they should never have been made available because after just two years, they stopped making them available. Why should they let people off the hook for deals that they willingly and knowingly signed? Well, the answer is they should do so when they realise that the product that they have encouraged people to sign is at fault, at risk, unfair and oppressive. 
One man who's spent most of his career studying banks and the way they behave thinks shared appreciation mortgages are particularly bad. It just seems like an utter disgrace. It's almost robbery, you know, it's just like, it's, 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 it's usury. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a form of lending which um, is exploiting the ignorance of the customer. And I think it's really unhealthy. It's got to be stopped. <laughs> Edna Robson borrowed £15,000 through a shared appreciation mortgage on her property in Chelmsford. What have you been up to? Now she's in a care home with advanced dementia. When she sold her house for £183,000, Barclays were entitled to help themselves to more than half of it, £96,000. The remainder will soon be swallowed up by the 24-hour care she needs. I think it's a fundamentally unfair product because of the amount of money they have to take back. There's no need to take that amount of money. I mean, if they'd have taken two or three times the initial loan, that would have been ample. But to take six times the amount of the original loan, it just seems to me to be, you know, for elderly people who just want to borrow a small amount of money and then they're, they're punished. And my mum now can't afford to pay for any care. Not today, Edna Robson. The bank has robbed my mum of the ability to look after and pay for herself. They just don't want to know. The, they pay themselves the big fat bonuses and at the end of the day all these elderly people that took out shared appreciation mortgages are being stitched up. As far as we've been able to find out, there is no recorded instance of either Barclays or the Bank of Scotland agreeing to change the terms of their shared appreciation mortgage. It means that every day house prices go up is another brick or roof tile that these mortgage customers have to hand over to their bank. In the mid-2000s, a parliamentary campaign led to Barclays setting up a hardship fund, but the Bank of Scotland refused to follow suit, saying they'd look at each individual case on application. In 2009, victims raised more than a million pounds for a fighting fund and took the banks to court, hoping to prove that shared appreciation mortgages were unfair to customers. One of the campaigners lives in Swanage. We thought it was all go, go, go and great. The solicitor said she'd run out of money and went back, wanted us to go back to the members, the shared appreciation mortgage holders, um, to get them to put a, another 5,000 each. And many of them couldn't do it. The banks kept deploying legal and technical arguments until the victim's fighting fund ran dry. They were then forced to sign gagging orders or pay the bank's costs. Not only could they never air their grievances again, the banks escaped the scrutiny of a judge as to whether the mortgage contracts were unfair. Although there was very little regulation around mortgage products in the 90s, both Barclays and the Bank of Scotland were signatories to the banking code. This code requires banks to act fairly and reasonably, ensure all services and products comply with the code, subscribe to the Banking Ombudsman Scheme and help customers understand the financial implications of a mortgage. Because the banking code was administered by the Banking Code Standards Board, which doesn't exist anymore, we went to the Financial Conduct Authority and the British Bankers Association and asked them if they thought that Barclays and the Bank of Scotland was breaching the code over shared appreciation mortgages. Both organisations refused an interview, saying the subject matter was outside their remit. Inside Out South contacted Barclays and the Bank of Scotland and asked them to explain how setting up companies outside the Ombudsman scheme ensured all products complied with the banking code. We asked them if their customers were made fully aware of what might happen if property prices rose in the way they did. And we asked, given how much house prices had risen, were they being fair and reasonable in refusing to consider altering the terms of their shared appreciation mortgages? Both Barclays and the Bank of Scotland refused to give this programme an interview, but they deny breaching the banking code and say, in all circumstances, they strongly advise customers to get proper, independent financial advice. The Bank of Scotland told us that customers were required to sign a document confirming they fully understood the nature of the product, and Barclays say they required confirmation from the borrower's solicitor that independent advice had been taken. Both banks also say that they are unable to release anyone from the terms of their mortgages, for instance by capping the amount to be repaid, because the rights to the profits have been packaged up and sold on to other investors. Barclays told us its hardship scheme can allow elderly customers to get a new mortgage from them when they move home, or if they want to stay in their existing property, 
they can apply for grants to make repairs. Bank of Scotland say despite not having a hardship scheme, it's been able to give grants to people to buy things like stair lifts if mobility becomes a problem. Brian doesn't drive much anymore, but once a week he lays flowers at his wife's grave. It gives him a chance to reflect on the lifetime they spent together and what the future might hold for him. I think when we took this deal out 16 years ago with the uh, Bank of Scotland, Joe and I, we both thought it was a great idea. And um, using a property value which uh, is just something in the air, you know, but giving us cash which we could live on was a great idea. But now, after 16 years on, um, where I get to a point where I um, need more help, you know, in terms of care, I think she'd be quite concerned, really, that uh, the bank um, sort of defaulted in a way and we owe them this uh, £250,000 or something for a miserable loan of 35000 I think she would find that quite shocking. She devoted herself to my welfare throughout her whole life, did that girl. Right now, Brian is surviving, but he doesn't know what he'll do if he loses his independence. Do you regret taking out that mortgage? Well, the way it's turned out, yes, I do. Because it's really put me in an impossible situation, to be honest, so I have to regret taking it out. I think that's all I can say about that, really. I should have found another way of uh, raising money to solve our problems. The way it's turned out, it's very unfortunate. But I'm really in a difficult situation. Yeah.